Hey everybody, Argent here with the long-awaited reaction review of Ghost in the Shell, the um, American version, the 2017 American version with Scarlett Johansson. So I just saw this movie yesterday, and I have to say I really liked it. Um, I was not expecting to like it. I went into this movie with very low expectations. I mean, the trailers kind of made it look like it could go either way. It's always risky to adapt an anime. Uh, just there's a lot of kind of cultural aspects of anime that don't always transfer very well to a Western audience. And just, yeah, there's a lot of cultural, philosophical, social aspects of how Japanese culture operates that can just be pretty difficult for a Westerner. So when they transfer it, when they take something like All You Need Is Kill and Make Edge of Tomorrow or Ringu and Make the Ring, um, you have to try to kind of put it in a form that Westerners will understand. And I guess this is kind of a roundabout way of me talking about uh, the controversy surrounding the movie, which is retarded, to put it perfectly honest. It's, it's one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. So basically the controversy is a bunch of the, the actors, despite the thing taking place in Japan, a bunch of the actors are white or white, um, like Scarlett Johansson. So they're like, well, we, we, we took this, this Japanese people and we made them play by white actors. And this is a form of whitewashing. This is a form of racism. Now, I'm hardly a Dems or the real racist guy, but I think this really just shows the aversion to fun, the aversion to, like, anything, just kind, any suspension of disbelief among the modern left. Like, come on. I mean, at a very basic level, what, what it's clear what they were doing is this is an adaptation. This is meant to take something that's kind of difficult for the average Western to understand something that's kind of weird and to put it a western spin on it so we take like mainstream um we take mainstream american actors particularly scarlett johansson and we take people who have na or native english speakers and we put them into the movie so people can relate to it a bit better uh it's basically just taking something japanese and putting a spin on it and I'm not sh I can't think of an example off the top of my head, but I think the Japanese do this all the time. It's very common for different cultures and different um, movie groups to take movies and adapt them. Like, for instance, India took Pride and Prejudice and made Bride and Prejudice, which was kind of a, well, an Indian version of the classic story. And that was just to adapt it to different audiences. Um, it's not uncommon to take Shakespeare plays like Hamlet and to turn Hamlet into the Lion King or something like that. It's just something people do. And the fact that they can't understand that, I think, says a lot about them. Um, I was actually, and this is just because I don't think this way, I was just like, oh, there is a controversy about them westernizing this film. That's really weird. I mean, the other thing about anime is people are very ethnically ambiguous in it anyways. Uh, the art style looks like kind of a combination of Japanese and Caucasian in a lot of cases, especially when you take into account eye and hair color. Um, I think the movie also does a good job of kind of providing an in-universe rationale for it that part of the majors, I guess you could say um, part of the majors identity crisis is the fact that she was Japanese but they put her into a white person's uh, body and I think that that was deliberate by Hanka, Hanaka Hanka well, however the hell you pronounce it to try and alienate her further from her her past life so I thought that was a good way of dealing with the issue but yeah it's like who gives a shit it's it's just such an irrelevant thing to bring up I think something people forget a lot about anime is not everything in anime is meant to be political. Not everything in anime is meant to be commentary on a social issue. Well, it's true there's a lot of social and political commentary in Ghost in the Shell. It's not uncommon in anime to just put in things that are impractical, that look cool, uh, to just put in, okay, we're just going to do this to tell the story. It doesn't really mean anything broader. Like, 
uh, yaoi, like they like characters who are randomly gay or whatever, are normally just put, are often just put in anime for a laugh or just because they thought it would be kind of an interesting social situation. I don't think it's really meant to represent anything broader than that. And, and that's very common, and I'll do a video on it. But I think the thing you have to understand is Japan is a much more homogenous, confident society. So if someone puts something in a movie, like they just have some white people living in future Japan or something, it's not going to brainwash the public into going, okay, we need to let in a, a billion refugees like what happens in the West. Because if someone releases, say, Will and Grace, then Western people are so easy to influence. They'll be like, oh, we have to support gay marriage because there was this sitcom I liked. Uh, that just doesn't really happen in Japan, at least as far as I know. So it's it's. I think you have to keep that in mind. Uh, I haven't seen what the actual response is from real Japanese people, not like Swiffle presenting um, North American Asians. But I, I, I would, my guess would be that the actual Japanese people probably don't give a shit. Uh, they probably just don't like the movie because it's it's Americanized, and they probably just find it as culturally alien as a lot of Japanese things are to Western audiences. And like I said, this is very common to take something that you don't understand and to try to put a modern spin on it. And it's, it's, it's kind of to go back to something kind of a bit of a stretch in, this is kind of why in the Catholic Church, we kind of de-emphasize the individual reading the Bible and interpreting it for themselves. Not that reading the Bible isn't virtuous, but most of the people who read it, they aren't trained in what the original language was like. They don't know anything about the mores, the cultures, the idioms of first century Hebrews. So they start reading this and like, oh, they, they, this, this line refers to this. Um, I'm just going to interpret it using a 20th, 21st century American perspective. Uh, without any of the context or the thought to which the audience it was written was for. So I guess a roundabout way, that's my attempt to kind of address the controversy. Um, overall, I thought it was a pretty good movie. I haven't seen the original. Uh, I have not seen the original film. I tried to watch the anime series, but I bored quit it. I just didn't find it that interesting. The characters I, I found were kind of flat. Um, it was kind of repetitive. I just didn't really like it, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I haven't watched the movies. I don't really like anime movies. I used to watch them more when I was younger, but I really hate Studio Ghibli films. Um, I remember after I watched Ponyo, it ruined my desire to watch more uh, anime movies. I used to watch like the Inuyasha movies when they came out and they were just lame. And I hate how they never have anything to do with the, um, they're, they're not canon. So they release all these fucking movies and none of them are canon and none of them are like ever referenced again. And like when they did the Babylon 5 movies, I don't watch those either just cause it's, it's not canon. It's, it's not like, it doesn't have anything to do with the actual storyline. I just find it's confusing and it just irritates me. Like in anime movies where they're like, I use the superpower. I'm never going to use it again. Uh, I just find that kind of thing annoying. That in like Studio Ghibli movies. Like I tried watching Spirited Away and I just kind of bored quit it. Uh, Princess Mononoke wasn't bad. It was just too long. It needed to be edited down. Uh, I watched Akira, which I thought was total trash. I couldn't get through it. Akira, I thought, was like one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Definitely one of the worst animated movies I've ever seen. I don't get why it's like this this classic, other than the fact that a bunch of people copied the aesthetics from it. The only anime, anime movie I think I really liked was Battle Angel. Um, but in general, I just can't watch them. Uh, but yeah, so this was... This was, uh, I think, a movie that if I'd have seen the original, I would have enjoyed less. Uh, I had read a bit about the, the plot summary of the original. I, I think, for my mind, the original had some better ideas. Like, I think the villain should have been an AI. He shouldn't have just been another cyborg. So I think that was kind of an interesting concept of her merging her mind with an AI. 
but they didn't opt for that maybe just because that would be too weird for western audiences but yeah i mean i don't really need to talk about the plot too much it's your pretty standard um cyberpunk plot um there's an evil corporation it's a dystopian future people are addicted to augmenting themselves etc it's pretty much a perfect cross between Blade Runner meets The Matrix. Which is good, because I like both of those movies. Like I said, it's an enjoyable movie, good action scenes. Uh, characters were a little flat. I don't like Scarlett Johansson very much. Um, most of the characters, aside from Olay, were just kind of annoying. Not really annoying, just not particularly interesting. I mean, Ghost in the Shell is a ride. I don't think it's nearly as philosophical or deep, probably, as the original was. Nor does it really, I think, explore issues as well as something like The Matrix would, did or Blade Runner did. Uh, I think a lot of the identity issues are probably really dumbed down and kind of the ontological, metaphysical issues have been buried. Does that really bother me? Uh, not particularly. Because I, I think they did it in a way that it wasn't awkward. Like, they, they went full out and just kind of making it into more of a spectacle action movie. Than just kind of going halfway between a philosophical movie like The Matrix and, and not. So I appreciate that there was at least consistency in it. Um, the, the scenes, I guess there was some, it was more ethical questions. But overall, it wasn't, that wasn't the focus um, on kind of the philosophical issues. So, like, I guess what I'm saying is they didn't try to deliver and they succeeded in not delivering. As opposed to, like, awkwardly inserting stuff into it and then not delivering on it. I hope that makes some kind of sense. Um, I don't know. It's it's kind of this, this thing when I'm reviewing movies. I think kind of the example I always bring up is The Dark Knight versus The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, the Dark Knight is close to a perfect movie. Pretty much everything in it works. Um, it's, 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 everything works, characters are great, script is great, everything ties together really well. It's, it's to my view almost what I'd call the perfect movie. Dark Knight Rises, though, I think is a lot more ambitious. I think it tries to deal with grander issues. I think it's more of an epic. The storyline's more complicated. And because of that, I think it's, it's in a lot of ways more flawed, but it's, it's the question, do you prefer a movie to be ambitious and to largely meet its ambition but not completely? Or do you prefer a movie to set goals within it, it, what it knows it can achieve and achieve that 100%? I mean, it's an interesting question. And that was kind of, uh, I think, a thing with Interstellar that a lot of people didn't like. Was Interstellar was an ultra-ambitious movie and it, it kind of didn't meet all of its ambitions but it, it did a really good job all the same. Uh, I tend to like movies in general that that try to meet amb really amb big ambitions and largely succeed. That's kind of how I felt with, I think, Guess Batman versus Superman, uh, Interstellar, Noah. A lot of people dislike these movies because they're kind of flawed. They aren't perfect. They have some issues with them. At the same time, though, whatever the, the kind of the, the flaws of these films are, I do appreciate that they try to elevate the narrative. Like, Dark Knight was about, uh, I guess you could say, morality tale. It was about um, well, an immovable force hitting a... An, an unstoppable force hitting an immovable object. It was kind of about these two completely different ubermensch aristocratic views of society. Whereas The Dark Knight Rises is literally the rise and fall of Western civilization. Um, existential questions about why civilization exists. What happens to us when things start to break down. Um, just a lot of very deep political issues. And there was a lot of problems with the film. But I think it really tried more. Like the whole thing where they go to Afghanistan or wherever it is. And, and you have that whole rise Thing. I think that's open to ridicule, but I also think it's a very ambitious scene and kind of a very ambitious theme to put into a movie. So, 
I guess what I'm saying is while the, the kind of the cyberpunk elements, the identity issues aren't particularly deep or well done in Ghost in the Shell, I think it keeps them within what they knew the movie could achieve. Um, it set out to kind of do something and it, it hit the mark. Um, so I don't know, like I said, it's very much a matter of opinion on these issues. Um, none of these movies I've talked about, I think you can really say are bad movies. I think there's good movies, there's bad movies, but kind of within that, there's a lot of room for personal preference. Like, I really like Insidious. It's one of my favorite horror movies. A lot of other people don't like Insidious. Uh, I don't really, I've never watched them, but they just don't look like my kind of thing. The Saw movies, a lot of people think the Saw movies are kind of what horror should be. So there's a lot of room for opinion, but people tend to agree like when a movie's really bad. Um, like, uh, I'm just trying to think, like another movie I like that no one else likes is I love the movie Speed Racer, which is another anime adaptation, which is, is silly, ridiculous. The plot doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's I just found it a lot of fun. Uh, there's just so much color, just so much, um, there's a lot of heart in it. A lot of just awesomely cheesy action scenes. So yeah, I really liked Speed Racer, but I acknowledge it's not like that good a movie. So I guess if you're looking for kind of a fun sci-fi movie, that's just kind of a, a fun time at the movies. That's not super ambitious, but kind of sets out to achieve a fun mystery crime film with kind of a, a bit of a deeper themes hidden somewhere in it then yeah i'd recommend seeing this film this movie gets an eight out of ten for me uh definitely recommend it it's nice to see a good adaptation for once uh have a nice day everybody and more content to come